Hey everybody, welcome to Rock Around the Ring. I am Kid Cadet, joined always by the fantabulous Miss Sweetie Danica Janelle. How you doing, girl? Delightful as always. Awesome. <laughs> oh, Love sing songy and I apologize. <laughs> Wait, what happened? It was very sing-songy. I don't know what happened just now. Let's move on. Oh, that's okay. Well, all right. Without further ado, we're about to bring out our guests of honor. Joining us first, it is his very first time being on Rock Around the Ring. He is the one and only Maddie Riley. Hello, hello. What's How are you doing? Up? First time, so you have to ease me in on this one, you know? Oh, we'll, we'll take good care of you. You're in okay. good hands. Awesome. But, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm super stoked. Yay. I'm, I'm nervous to see what's, uh, what you have in store, but it's going to be Ooh. fun. Yes. I know, right? Ha ha ha. Oh, freaking out. <laughs> Diabolical. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next guest has been here a couple of times before. So uh, let's give a very warm welcome to the wonderful and beautiful Matt Navasky. And Hello. I like to say, thank you for being here. And now you are officially part of the Fifth Timers Club. Yeah, I get a jacket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is so creepy. <laughs> oh my God. Now, Matt. <laughs> too funny. Do, do you remember taking this photo? I mean, do, do you have any recollection of when this um, occurred? It was, yes, um, I do. It was a really, really fun night. I'm just glad that you spelled my last name right. That's all I care about. You actually yeah. got it right. Most people don't. Oh, no. Well, after five times yeah. having you on the show, if we mess that up, that is on us. It, it's definitely on you. Thank you. I'm <laughs> I'm so honored, though, the, the smoking jacket. Uh, Only the is best. that a smoking jacket or is it a robe or is it, what is it? It's like yes. a... Yeah, Both. it's badass. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I look good. That's all I got to say. I look <laughs> yeah. But that is pre-blonde Matt Novetsky. It is. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Th there's a lot of compliments yeah. going on right now for everybody's hair. So, you know, this is uh, a lot going on. All right. So before we get things started, I just wanted to congratulate you, Matt Novetsky, because we're okay. We, we're going to say Maddie and Matt. Right, that right. just perfect. Um, because Maddie, 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 Matt. Okay, uh, right with this Matt. Yeah. Heather. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to congratulate you because oh my my broke the top ten on the uh, on the rock chart, right on the all rock chart. So what, what, yeah. So what is this like for you as like an independent band? I mean, this is a big deal. It's uh, badass. It's like, I mean, I I think that that's kind of being independent is is like it really hits home when you're looking at the chart when you're actually like because as a musician you know you, do, you you're never really you don't really ever want to like sit there and look at the chart like that doesn't sound fun but then when you're like your manager somebody's like look at this check this out and you look at it and then you see like universal sony columbia capital up down brando you know and then like back to all those other labels rca whatever it is it's like damn, that's pretty awesome. Like that's, I don't know. I think that's pretty amazing. I think you're seeing a lot more of that these days, which is a good thing, you know, like a lot of independent bands are, there's an avenue for them where there wasn't before, but I'm just really, I'm just, I'm just happy to still be alive, man. <laughs> I'm just happy to be part of the conversation. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> so getting into the two of you individually and together, um, can you tell us a little bit about how the two of you met? Uh, Ooh, that's that's, that is yeah. a really good question. Um, well, how did we? Yeah. I, oof, I think Instagram? Just, yeah, that's literally just having mutual friends and stuff in the, uh, in the scene and everything. Um, I think that's all it was. Um, yeah. I think it was... Yeah. Yeah, that's literally. Have we I, have been been in the I same room? I, I, I think I, I. Yeah, I think I tapped you. I think I actually tapped you first about something on Instagram. We just talked you since did. then, but we just. Yeah. It, it, the, the, I feel like the 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 especially being a bass player because there aren't as many bass players as there <laughs> are guitarists in the world. No. It's, just, it's a much smaller club. Um, yeah. Uh, it's not really. It's it's it's. Um, it's a much smaller world than you'd think it is, you know, as far as just musicians and, you know, it like, and he's in LA, I'm, I'm in here in Austin, but I feel like these days, especially with social, social media and everything else, like you feel so connected to everybody, you know? So it's such a small club. Like 
it's just a way smaller world than you'd ever anticipate. So staying in touch with people, becoming friends with people, like playing shows, festivals, whatever that is, you get to know each other, you keep in touch, which is super easy to do these days. It's not hard to do at all. In fact, you're actually, you're actually at another base player <laughs> that we both know. That's right. You're at his place uh, right now. I'm at his place right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, Derek Frank, who uh, was very fortunate to uh, give me a nice little backdrop and everything to use, but another mutual yeah. friend. And uh, he also has some really nice gigs and stuff. Uh, in the industry and it's it's funny because what there's it seems like there's 10 bass players and we all just kind of yeah. know each other at least that's what it yeah. seems like you know right. um but yeah i think it must have been maybe a Derek connection or something that we got in touch i remember uh you had messaged me right before i was supposed to go to europe you wanted to do something but then yeah. that was when the whole pandemic and everything happened so uh yeah but here we are six months later we got something going you know awesome yeah <laughs> love bringing people together yes, that's of it you, you did it <laughs> <laughs> Matchmakers. <Yeah. laughs> so, Maddie, you have not always lived in LA. Can you tell us about how you got out there and, you know, how yeah. things started actually, you know, really taking off for you? Because that's it's pretty yeah. big deal what's going on right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of happened very fast. You know, they kind of say like overnight success takes 10 years to happen. And I feel like that's what's happening with me. Um, I'm from Buffalo, New York originally. Um, that's where I learned all my chops and everything. Uh, went to a two-year school there. And uh, then I went to a school in New York City where I studied music production. And yeah, after college, I just kind of hustled and everything all over the East Coast. And I couldn't really get anything to work. Um, you know, bad clients, bad deals, all this type of stuff. So eventually, um, I had a brother who was living in LA. And he's like, yeah, you should just try the try the West Coast. See, uh, see if you're digging it. And I don't know. I was so against it. I'm like, nah. East Coast. I'm going to make it work in New York City. I'm feeling it. Uh, within like two weeks of living in LA, I'm like, okay, this is obviously the where I'm supposed to be. Um, and it just, at, at that point, I had all the red flags squared out. I knew what to look out for in terms of the positive stuff. I knew what to avoid. Um, so I was able to just kind of, you know, go up, up, up and uh, eventually, you know, get the success that I always hoped for. So it's really cool. And uh, I've only been out here like two years, two and a half years. So super stoked and, and very blessed and very thankful for everything. That's awesome. Like I was saying to you the other day, I think good things happen to good people and uh, you're good people. So I'm, I, I hope both, so. Both, both <laughs> yeah. of y'all. <laughs> yeah. That's All right. It. So well, the, the, the weather is a lot nicer in LA than it is in Buffalo. And it's yeah. a lot nicer in Austin than it is in Traverse City, Michigan, which is where <laughs> I'm from. So that's yeah, I didn't even want to do music. I just wanted to get away from the weather and the music just <laughs> happened. You know, was, oh, this is cool. There's wow, a bonus. That yeah, that was easy. No, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, no, the weather is also a, a very nice perk here uh, yeah. on the West Coast, you know. So how uh, how did you end up landing the gig to play bass for Ava Levine? So when I moved out here, um, actually, it was funny. I, I was working like a, a hardware store retail job when I first moved here. And uh, within like uh, the first two weeks of working at the job, uh, I actually met Derek Frank, a uh, bass player. I cashed him out as I was just like a retail worker. And he kind of was like, hey, you should, if you're a bass player, you should go to these places and kind of network. And uh, took his advice and just started networking around town for like a year and a half or so. Um, eventually, when the Avril gig came up, it was just like a word of mouth type thing. They needed a bass player like really fast. Um, the tour was happening in like two months. Um, there was a, a void in the, the band lineup. And uh, word of mouth, referrals, all you know, that was literally it. They, uh, a lot of people around town were like, Hey, you should check out Matt. At the time I had like super hot pink hair. They're like, he's got the cool look. He loves punk rock, really good guy, good bass player. Um, so I kind of got scouted behind the scenes and eventually got the call and that was it. Um, which kind of, you know, that's, that's the industry in a nutshell. It's, it's about good referrals, good reputation. It's about meeting as many people as you can. And, uh, don't worry about all the other stuff. It kind of just, if you do that, everything kind of comes into line that way. Awesome. True. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's how I got it. Awesome. Okay. So side note, uh, driver wants to know, I believe it's driver. Uh, what hair dye do you use? <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know. I get it done. Um, you know, I'm all like, Ooh, I got to go to a salon and get it done. So this is like a custom <laughs> color, <laughs> you know, actually I'm, I'm, uh, custom. <laughs> Ooh, custom. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm going to be uh, out of LA for a little bit. And uh, I was even talking to my hairdresser and I'm like, Hey, what color should I use to like, keep it touched up while I'm out of town? And she's like, mm, 
I'll just make you a bottle of it. You can bring it back. And I'm like, well, is there like a blue shampoo or blue dye? She's like, nope, don't do it. It'll mess up your hair. You got to stay custom. So I honestly don't know. I, I go, I think that's how she keeps her, uh, her, her job with me. It's like, yeah. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You want it, you got to keep coming back. <laughs> right? It's very hush hush. Um, but yeah. I think it's blue. I think it's what it is. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what I use. <laughs> and, and Matt, we have a couple of people requesting to see your new beautiful blonde locks. Here's the moment guys. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. There you go. <laughs> Ta -da. People are actually requesting that. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen about ten comments so far. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. I did. I I did see. Oh, there we go. I did see one person just said, "Base is badass." Oh, nice. That was, that, that was my favorite. That was my favorite one right there. Me too. I agree. Base is yeah. badass. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Absolutely. It is true. Yeah. So another question for the both of you, because you're both involved with the production side of things. So what has production and producing been like, you know, in this um, interesting world that we are currently living in? Ooh, that's, yeah, that's a good well, question. It's cool. Cause like right now I'm working on, uh, I'm just wrapping up work with this band uh, that I'm producing. Um, they're Sacramento based. And at the start of like the pandemic and everything, uh, when the tours all got canceled and live venues all closed and stuff, I went back to Buffalo for a little bit, just to kind of hang with family and everything. And I was able to do all the pre-production work, set up all the sessions, co-write the songs from across the country. Um, so that was like super cool. Um, I think a lot of stuff right now is remote, uh, a lot of collaboration, whether it's like videos or songwriting and all that. Um, eventually when things started opening, I came back to LA and we wrapped the record and everything, but um, that was cool that just based on how the industry is and how it's so connected with cloud and internet and everything, I was able to do, uh, you know, two months of pre-production remotely and then just come to LA and not even feel like I missed a beat. So that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I st I've stayed insanely busy during this time. I've, I've been working like pretty much nonstop, um, which, which at first it was kind of hard to do because I think it took a while and you might be able to relate to this too, Matt, but it was like, you didn't know how long this was going to last at first, you know? So it was like, well, I think we're, I think you're going to be home for a month. You <laughs> might be home for another month. Okay. The next okay. tour might get, can't, you know, so it was like, <laughs> I don't really know how much it's, it's safe for me to say I can do or how much, you know, I can plan ahead as far as production, as far as working with other bands and whatnot. But but like he said, like one thing that I've really been able to tap into, which has been awesome, is doing things remotely. I've actually just started doing songwriting remotely, which is oh. very interesting. I have a couple this month, like one with a guy in Nashville and another one um, uh, with another artist on the East Coast. So that that's pretty cool. Like mm. it's it's kind of weird, you know, like writing is kind of weird. I think production is <laughs> a little easier because you can go, OK, I'm going to work on this idea and I'll send it to you and then you give me your ideas. But, you know, with writing, especially if you don't really know each other, it's like, hey, man. <laughs> what you, so what do you want to write about you know? um so that's kind of weird but i mean the whole you know as you guys know the whole world's changing it's like yeah. doing this doing this remotely and in, in like zoom you know school through zoom and everything else is really just kind of open our eyes to the technology is our friend you know so let's <laughs> use it as my Maddie. camera goes, I love it. Technology is our friend. As my camera shuts up. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a great habit. So, so while we're waiting for yeah. your camera to come back, um, is yeah. there any artists or bands that you guys are currently working with that you think maybe deserve some notoriety that maybe we should all know about? Ooh, I uh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Matt, I'll let you go first. Okay, uh, but we sorry. can't see you. I know. I'm like the app closed. I love it. Okay, okay. so. Yeah. Who cares? I'll get the camera going. But uh, yeah, I'm working with this band, uh, like I said, from, oh, look at, I'm talking to a black screen. I'll get this going. Uh, tell you what, Matt, you go first and I'll plug my camera back in. <laughs> yeah, you do your thing. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm actually, this is really interesting, but I'm, I'm working with a lot of, uh, I'm working with a lot of singer songwriters right now. I just, I actually have done a couple songs with this girl, Grace Sorensen and Grace's stuff is, um, it's it has this really like very kind of old school R and B vibe to it, which I love. Um, I'm having a lot of fun working with her, and I think that she's got a really bright future. I'm really excited about that. Um, 
but I'm, I'm also working, we haven't done the record yet, but I'm doing um, this kind of long-term project with this girl, Jackie Rose, and Jackie has synesthesia. I don't know if oh, you know nice. what synesthesia oh, is. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. And so I'm working with her every day right now and like, you know, every weekday. And I'm learning so much from her because, you know, with synesthesia, your senses are combined and everything is in colors. And so music, she interprets music in colors. And I got to say, like, I feel like I'm going to school right now working with her. Like, I'm, I'm just learning to look at things in a different way and to appreciate music in a whole new way. So I'm super excited about making her record. And there's a lot more that can't really talk about yet, but there's a lot that's going to happen with her record and um, synesthesia in general and in like the studies behind synesthesia. So it's kind of this whole like project that's all coming together. So I'm super excited about it. That's, that, that's so why. Cool. I, yeah. I yeah. know Billie Eilish also has it. Yeah. And so does um, Marina and the Diamonds. Yep. Yeah. You have, have a form a, of it, Danica? A, yeah. I have a weird form of it where I, um, I don't remember the, the specific term for it, but it's, so I organize like days of the week or or months or things in very specific ways that until I was like 20 something, I didn't realize that everybody else didn't do that. Yeah. Um, you know, I see days of the week scheduled like a, like a basically like a D lying down. So I see like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and like numbers. So I, interesting. I, I organize them in a very specific way that I had no idea. That this was yeah. <laughs> I've been best friends with Danica. Someone. No, I've been messing yeah. with Danica for 30 years and I've never heard this before in my life. Go. What is this? <laughs> this is called. Well, ja Jackie even said that she didn't, she just, it, it, at first it was a huge shock to her because until she found out what that was, she just assumed that the whole world was that way. Yeah. And she didn't realize that people, and she has like 19 different forms of synesthesia too. It's pretty extreme, you know, and things yeah. like mirror touch and Whoa. it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's just so, it's so amazing though. Yeah. It's so amazing. It really is. I'm just does, having such a great time with it. Does she see you as a color or like, does she like, cause I know a lot of times you yeah. see like ha halos around people or yes. like, yeah, people have colors. People wow. have colors, different colors. That yeah. Is amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, that'll be really cool. I'm, I'm very interested in, in hearing that project. I think between the four of us, we got quite a bit of color right now. Right? Actually. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We're a rainbow. <laughs> this is awesome. So uh, what, what about you, Maddie? Any uh, artists or bands that you're looking forward to working with? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, well, right now, I, like I said, I just wrapped up uh, work with this band. I might as well give them a plug. It's like their first time in the studio. I, I met them after a show in San Francisco. We... Um, we had opened up for, or actually we headlined and Kesha opened up for us. We did a, like a holiday Christmas show. And uh, right after the show, this band came up to me outside the venue and they were like, hey, great show. Can we get some pictures, blah, blah, blah. And uh, hey, you produce, right? Can you produce our record? And I'm like, yeah, send me a demo type thing. And uh, they sent me the demo. They're like, you know, 19, 20 years old, whatever. And I, I loved it. So we've been working on the record like for like five months. <laughs> you know, it's been cool because we had a lot of time in quarantine. Um, so their Grave Mistake is the name of the band. Um, they got some singles that are be coming out uh, within the next few months and an EP coming out before the end of the year. So I might as well plug them. Uh, they deserve it. They've been working really hard. Um, it's cool to see them like in their first time in a studio and stuff. Um, they're everything that we kind of take for granted. And we're like, oh, yeah, this is whatever. They're just kind of like, whoa, this is. And it's really cool to, to like get inspired again and be like, oh, yeah, I remember what it was like just to get excited by seeing like a computer screen with pro tools on it or something you know yeah, yeah. so it's been really cool and it's like oh yeah i remember what it was like so it's it's been fun and might as well give them a little plug and hopefully the record uh gets them a lot of buzz and everything around town they want to eventually move to la so i'm trying to give them all of like the advice to what it takes to move out of sacramento and come to la where you're literally surrounded by the best talent in the world which is not always the easiest thing you know yeah. right for sure but yeah that's uh that's it other than you know I'm excited to work with Avril again. That'll be fun. <laughs> Hopefully this happens. Hopefully the pandemic and everything uh, sorts out and I can work with her again. That'd be fun. Yeah. Sooner rather than later. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So kind of speaking of being on tour, I guess, um, what would each of you say is your favorite part about being on tour when you actually have the opportunity? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Okay, I guess I'll go. I'm jumping in. Yeah, no, you, uh, you do it. Okay. You go. I don't want to do it. I want to do it. I always talk because literally my answer involves like talking. I love like meeting all the people, um, whether it's like the people who work at the venues, the catering, uh, the crew, the fans, everything. For me, it's like 
every single city we go to, there's like dozens of new people to meet, talk to, hear their experiences, uh, take pictures with and do all this. It's kind of crazy. It's like, oh, this is cool. And then you kind of repeat the uh, the cycle. Um, for mm-hmm. me, it's like that interaction that I get. Um, seeing everyone like get all excited and just hearing everyone's stories, going to a city I've never been to and talking to the people that work at the venue to kind of hear stories of, you know, the venue, other people that have been there. Um, I love all that stuff. For me, it's like the human interactions that I, I take away most. Awesome. Yeah, I got to agree with that 100%. I mean, like, we, we've we made so many friends over the years, you know, like people that we keep in, in touch with and in contact with, you know, that we've built friendships with, like lifelong friendships with. I think it's awesome. I love that. I love that aspect of, like, getting to see people and knowing, like, okay, we're in Charlotte. I know I'm going to see this person and this person today. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Like, I may, have go, I may go have breakfast today with an old friend here, you know, somebody that's been coming to shows forever or whatever that is, but... One of the things that I really love that I've noticed the last couple tours, and I guess it's like, you know, because we've been doing this for for a minute. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm noticing a lot of like a lot of people are bringing their kids and it's a lot of people that were there back in the day when they were in their 20s or, you know, their teens or whatever back in the day. And now they're showing up and they're bringing their kids and their kids are becoming fans. And so when I see their kids like with Blocktober shirts on and. Like, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm like, oh that's God. pretty cool. Like, <laughs> seeing the next generation, you know, like, appreciating uh, appreciating us and, and uh, you know, not thinking that we're uncool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same thing with, like, yeah. Avril, too. Like, I know I haven't been with her from the start, but, you know, I see the people that grew up with her, and now they also have children, and they're dressing up with the, the you know, the necktie and all this stuff, awesome. and wearing the, the shirts and everything. And, you know, you got, like, the two generations still enjoying it. Um, so that's cool. super cool to see. <laughs> and now Dan is <laughs> laughing because uh, the other day Heather posted a picture of her from when we were in high school, and she Uh-oh. and I both rocked the Avril look quite oh, a bit. Oh, I love it. Oh, oh nice. Oh, yeah. So now we have to see these pictures. Where are they? Yeah. Oh, it's on my Instagram. Facebook. Oh, that's a big tease. <laughs> now but we have yeah, to go like, hunt for them. I, I was I was singing the national anthem for the Florida Marlins and um I, I for some reason like I was rocking like the big neck t- I thought I was like, <laughs> cool. like like you could not touch me I was so cool yeah but then I also looked like Jeff Hardy from like the Hardy Boys because I was wearing <laughs> like like a long sleeve mat it, I was a mess Danica and I that's no all good no that was the look <laughs> apparently yeah. that, that's what we thought it up. <laughs> yeah sure um okay so <laughs> oh yeah there it is. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, great. Thanks you pull a lot. it off. You pull yeah, it off. You, do. you yeah, can but... open up for us on tour. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm available. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. And we can take thank you so much. Okay. Anyway, so let's uh, clear our eyes out. Um, so, Matt, I know that you're obviously an avid video game player, and mm-hmm. I wanted to know if there's any new games that you're playing. And I mean, also for you too, Maddie, like, <laughs> what, what do you guys like to do to kind of like pass the time on tour? Like, do you like to play video games on the bus or anything like that? Um, yeah, I, I well, I like to read. I like to, I love to game, honestly, but I'm not like a cult. Like, I don't, I'm not an online you know, like headset, like, yeah, you know, storm in the castle with my friends. <laughs> like that's like my time. Like gaming is like, I, the, the real world needs to go away. Like this is my time. Me like, you know, I love story games. I love the last of us. I just finished the last of us too. What an awesome story. So good. Yeah. Nice. I'm, I'm yeah. Gonna, it's my fallout poster. Oh, fallout. Yeah. <laughs> fallout. So much fun. What a cool game. Um, uh, but I'm playing Ghost of Su- Ghosts of Ghost of Tsushima right now on PS4. It's pretty awesome. It's a samurai game. It's pretty sweet. Ooh. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Ooh. Um. And I and and like again, I love to read. I love like I'm a music autobiography and biography junkie. I've read pretty much every book there is written about or by a musician. And I'm reading um the music lesson by Victor Wooten right now. It's pretty incredible. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Love yeah. It. I. Uh, I, I can't really get into video games too much. It's funny. Um, well, actually, the studio we're at right now doing this record, they have like a, an old arcade cabinet and they got like Donkey Kong Jr. And I'm like obsessed with yeah. it. So, so for me, it's like the old school like Nintendo games I can get down with. But uh, yeah. I, I haven't had a, a a video game console in many generations and stuff. And uh, I don't know. For me, it's 
I, I always want to use my time for something else, I guess. Not to say that it has to always be music, um, but for me, it's I'm more of like a movie guy, I guess. Movie and uh, horror movie or something. I'll watch that. Yes. Right yes. <laughs> yes. There we go. I'm a horror that's buff. Like, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. That's, like, that's what I do on the tour bus. It's like, uh, I'll get in the bunk and I'll just watch like Halloween or like, you know, something like that. Uh, <laughs> I know like the drummer Chris had a, a Nintendo switch on the tour, but I just never played it. I don't know. I was more like, oh, I'm going to go watch this horror movie and try to get so, scared before I go to I'm the a, next city. I may tell you right now. And I promise you this. So I was so against video games for so long. I used to tease uh, my best friend who was our old tour manager was a gamer. And I was like, you're such a nerd. Like I would just give <laughs> so much crap over it. And then I played the last of us. Cause it's actually a horror game. And they're making yeah. that into a TV show on for HBO. Oh, cool. They're actually turning into a series. Yeah. And Very I played cool. the game and I got so sucked into it that it turned me into a gamer. That's but cool. it's like, if you love horror or you love horror films, you have to at least try it. It's, I, it's unreal. It's so good. Actually, I remember when I was younger and uh, my cousin, I was at my cousin's place and he rented the original like Resident Evil. Yeah. This was like what, late nineties or something. And I remember yeah. playing that game and just being like so freaked out. It was fun. So yeah. I, I can get that with the horror video games, but yeah. like, um, totally. I, I, I can't really consider myself a gamer because I would get called out immediately they'd be like oh what'd you think of this game i'll be like i don't know never heard of it haven't heard yeah. of that or that you know yeah but i like the horror one yeah See, I, like danik and i used to like steal her brother's like old school nintendo and and yeah. donkey kong was like our <laughs> game oh but there we go i don't think we were good at it were we good uh, excuse me i beat donkey kong country thank you very much oh, okay oh. <laughs> well, yeah I, say, I don't think anyone's really good at donkey kong like that's the point <laughs> of those games no one's good at it it's great yeah, I just like the roller coaster part. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Shall we? Uh, let's. Uh, hmm. You both have this like kind of like facetious. Yeah, I don't know. You got this look I know, like right? you're up to something. It's kind this of my, freaking me out a little bit. Yeah, it's my first time here. I'm like, it's just how it normally goes. I got something diabolical, you know? No, no, it's okay. In, in time, my friends, in time. Okay. Oh, oh, boy. boy. Okay. Okay, um, how about now? Oh, look at the how, time. Oh, I wait, no, no. <laughs> how about now? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce to you guys to the stream. He is the writer and director of Terrifier and the upcoming Terrifier 2. It's no, no, no way. What? <laughs> oh my god oh, no oh, what is happening is this oh, real life that's yeah damon yeah. what's up man how's it going man oh, oh my god um, hey buddy so cool how are you man good good how you guys doing oh what's great up, Mr. Pet? <laughs> that's <Hi>. wild <laughs> okay yeah that's I, pretty I, good. I, <laughs> i'm fanning out man yeah Sorry. me too this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah please. I, I I know that you and and Matt had a virtual one on one through the Galaxy Con Live experience, and the yeah. other day I was talking to Maddie, and he was like, "Terrifier is my favorite movie," and so oh, I, I I messaged Damien, and I was like, "Damien, can you please like jump on the stream for a few minutes because I want to surprise them." So oh, thank yeah. you for doing this. Oh, of course, you guys are awesome, man. Thanks for having me. Oh. <laughs> so very glad I, to have you back. <laughs> I, I guess my my question for both the mats is, what do you guys love so much about Art the Clown? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not uh, even with like uh, All Hallows Eve and then Terrifier. Like there's there's just no stopping. It's just kind of like you set the theme. It's dark. The guy's kind of crazy. But I've seen so many horror movies where it's like eventually it lets up or the tropes happen. You kind of know what's going to happen. For me, it's always been like the my, you know, expectations are always completely flipped with whatever he does, especially like the endings of the movies and all that. I'm like, that's cool. And that's what made me like so much. Like I've seen so many horror movies and eventually I'm like, OK, that was good. That was good. This is one that's like finally something that's just kind of like just not stopping. It's just going crazy. And like it goes nonstop. <laughs> Uh, and I saw the trailer for the second one and I'm like, cool, it looks like it's going to continue. This is great because I want something that's just like unapologetically like dark and just sets something and it just does it without any type of like, oh, I got to kind of watch what I do or like, I don't want to offend anyone. Like this movie is just kind of like, wow, that's dark and gory and that's great. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's I appreciate that. Man. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. funny that you say that's funny that you say that too, because when I had my my one on one, I was actually talking about the one scene where the upside down scene. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty unapologetic, man. Yeah, a little bit. That's yeah. a good word. Oh yeah. yeah. 
Actually, that yeah. was the first scene I, I found out about that movie. I was out to dinner with uh, my brother and some friends and stuff. Someone's like, hey, have you seen Terrifier? This was maybe like two years ago. And I'm like, no, I haven't seen it. They're like, oh, this is one scene. And that's what they talked about. And I'm like, oh, I got to watch it. Oh, and man. then from there, I'm like, oh, this is crazy. This is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. We, we had an idea that that was going to be the scene people talked about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we made jokes. And they haven't. Time and effort into that one. Um, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say people haven't stopped talking about it. Yeah, like sure. it's it's crazy. Well that's and, the problem. And... Now we gotta <laughs> top that scene. And we're certainly not being un unapologetic in the you know, two is probably worse than the first one. So we're going so above and beyond with the gore. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we're all very excited. We actually I'll tell you guys this. I don't know if anybody knows this yet, but um oh. so that scene that we have to try and top the hacksaw scene now in part two we actually didn't shoot that yet because we're so afraid that we're not going to top it we're like going out of our way to like really keep building these effects and we just keep adding to the scene and making sure that it's crazier and crazier so we're very close to probably going to shoot that in like two weeks and oh my uh, God. nice yeah, so. oh, it's man. Yeah. It's gonna, <laughs> i mean there's there's plenty of scenes like that in the movie but we need that one really insane one that people are going to you know, yeah. talk about again. So hopefully it's this one. But sure. uh, nice. oh man, can't wait to see it. <laughs> Same so I guess here. kind of a, a question for all three of you then. Um, what is your earliest recollection of watching horror films, and what really draws you to those kind to this genre? Ooh. Um, I know, I know mine immediately. Um, I so I used to. I remember going downstairs, like just waking up in the middle of the night for whatever reason when I was really little. And I actually grew up in this old, like turn of the century, like huge old kind of like Victorian style house that was already kind of creepy as it was, you know, and I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would just, if I couldn't go back to sleep, I would go downstairs and turn on the TV Well, I turned on the TV and the exorcist was on. <laughs> well, that's a good and one to was, get started with. Oh yeah. And I was probably <laughs> like seven, <laughs> like seven or eight maybe. And, and I sat there and watched the whole thing by myself. <laughs> and my mom, and I remember like telling my mom about it the next day, like, yeah, I watched this movie <laughs> the exorcist. And she was like, Oh my God, what, what happened? <laughs> um, but I just, I loved it. I love the feeling. I love the feeling of, of, um, I just love being freaked out. I love the energy. I love the adrenaline, you know? Yeah. That's why I love playing horror games is I just let, like, it's, it's, it's so much more fun to, to be scared. Oh yeah. It Next is. Time. <laughs> so it's like a, it's like a drug to be afraid, but completely safe at the same time. Yeah. Right. right. Rush there. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I could do the horror. I love horror movies, TV shows, all that stuff, video games. But when it comes to like the walkthrough attractions, I'm the worst. I, I get so scared. I'm like, I, I freak out. I'm like, I can't do it. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm going to get killed. You know? That's like me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's I next. Do it. Sure. Yeah. Help me. <laughs> uh, Maddie, what's your um, first horror movie that you really remember? Uh, First one that I remember and still to this day is like my absolute favorite, uh, Night of the Living Dead. Um, I remember it was just so Ooh, right. grainy and dark and it just something about it just um, it seemed like so real. And so I, it was like the first one I saw I was in like middle school. The first one that I really was like aware enough to kind of, uh, you know, take in. And uh, yeah, it's still to this day, like that opening scene and everything is crazy. So like every time I'm in Buffalo, I have to make the trip to Evan city, which is like two oh. or three hours away yeah, yeah, to go yeah. see the cemetery and all the filming locations and stuff. Cause uh, uh, that's even crazier to know. It was like this fantasy movie that I saw, like, this is so nuts. And it just like messed with my brain. And then 10 years later to go for the first time and see like the actual cemetery and the filming locations. I'm like, this is crazy. This is so weird. Like it's real, yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, um, did you ever, still did you ever go to the uh, Monroeville mall? Cause go on the no. Um, and man, every time I'm always like, oh, this will be the time I'll do it. This will be the time. And then I never do. And it's so funny. Um, I know I got to do that too. the Dawn of the Dead location. Uh, I also love like, uh, actually, I got a tattoo on tour of like, uh, let's see. Uh, I got a creature from the Black Lagoon. Where oh, it nice. Heather. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Kate Cadet's got her, her creature dress on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's oh, perfect. That's great. So that, that creature is like my favorite universal monster. I'm obsessed with like the universal monsters, but uh, yeah, night of the living dead like, by far. It's just like, that's my movie, you know? Awesome, 
That's awesome. yeah. Good choice. Good choice. It's a good one, right? <laughs> yeah. George Romero is one of my heroes, biggest heroes. Me too. So obsessed with him. Um, yeah, and I'm not a filmmaker, so I can't really say like, oh, he's my biggest inspiration and blah blah blah. But being a, a movie buff or whatever horror movie buff, mm -hmm. you know, George Romero by far like my favorite. Mm -hmm. I love all of his yeah. movies and stuff. So, Oof. yeah, best. Let's talk about him forever. <laughs> um, I don't. My favorite um, that like as a kid, that's that's a tough one. Like uh, I feel like horror movies were always there for me because I've been watching them in such a young age. But mm -hmm. one of the one of the standouts was definitely seeing the Lost Boys in the movie theaters when I was four. Oh, and wow. It made a, just a lasting impression. Like, you have no idea. I remember it like it was yesterday. I really do. I remember the smell of the popcorn, like the red carpet. I remember seeing the sign above the door, seeing Lost Boys scroll, not really knowing what I was walking into. And just everything. The Warner Brothers sign coming up, hearing Cry Little Sister come on, being over the yeah. water. Oh. Like everything, I remember because the the reactions from the audience were so vivid. I remember so much laughter. Like they, that movie got a lot of laughter, but I also mm -hmm. remember when it was time for the movie to get serious and when you actually they they reveal themselves as vampires for the first time and they come out of the shadows and everything. Audience is going crazy. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the adrenaline and everything, like the whole audience just came together and really really enjoyed that movie, and it just it's been my favorite ever since. So. For now, I'm just gonna go with the Lost Boys because that was a really standout. Nice, yeah. such a good one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to remind everyone that tomorrow is actually the last day, if I'm right, that Terrifier is streaming on Netflix. Oh no! It, yeah, it is. So oh. go watch it tonight. <laughs> tonight. Do it before you have to go pay more money for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's obviously well worth it, but. <laughs> yeah, stream it tonight and then buy it, it tomorrow. Netflix, yeah. <laughs> well, it's I, making room where, I don't know where it's going next that everybody's been asking me. Um, hopefully it gets picked up on another streaming platform, maybe Shutter or Amazon. I'm waiting to hear from Ooh, distribution yeah. companies, see if they have any plans. So as soon as I know, I'll let everybody know. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Maddie mentioned it before, but the trailer has been blowing up. And this trailer is so perfectly put together. It gives us enough, but not too much, leaves us wanting more. So what has mm -hmm. the feedback been like, Damien, for the trailer for, for Terrifier 2 so far? Oh, That's Maddie, good. it looks like you have something to say. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, I got my friend Derek. Hey, you say hi. Derek. Hey. <laughs> Derek, I'm on a live stream, buddy. Oh, cool. There you go. There's Matt. Oh, wow. Too many bass <laughs> players. Hey. Too many bass players in this <laughs> it's a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. Right on. We all enjoy. <laughs> I'm like not in the camera. There you go. Right. Oh, there we are. Okay, cool. Right on. <laughs> enjoy, man. Right on. That's funny. Okay, so going back to the trailer for the second one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Reaction's been uh, fantastic. Uh, mainly very positive. Um, I like that people are seeming to, that they appreciate the Sienna character, which is my favorite, the, the female heroine in this one. It was my favorite character that I've ever written. So I hope, uh, I'm excited to see what people think about her when they see the movie. But um, yeah, I mean, I wanted to give a little teaser, but as I was cutting it, I, was, I just wanted to put more and more into it. So it kind of became a mini trailer. It's a little bit more than a teaser. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. This has a much bigger story uh greater characters in this one so cool. take it in some really radical directions so uh, take a lot of chances in this nice. one and awesome. um, yeah I'm we all the action everything this is like on steroids so I <laughs> like one, you're gonna like this one yeah awesome <laughs> well, well before yep I was just gonna say if you, if if you need any music I know a couple guys who could help you out here for sure <laughs> oh. <laughs> amazing, amazing. That would be cool for real. For real. Yeah. Awesome. Just a bunch of bass on the record. Oh, yeah. That'd be the soundtrack. Bass and bass. Fantastic. That would be in touch. Yeah. That's great. Oh, I'll, I'll put you all in touch after uh, after the stream. But uh, before we let you go, I do want to mention that Damien, you and Lauren, who plays your new lead heroine, Sienna, in the upcoming Terrifier 2, are joining us October 26th during Halloween week. Yeah. So we will have you back. Thank you so much for doing this. This means the. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Thank you. This yeah. means the world to us. Anytime. I love you guys. So. Thank you, Damien. Awesome. You match. <laughs> Fantastic, dude. It's good seeing you guys. Thanks, Daddy. You're awesome. You're awesome. awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Bye, Damien. You got it. Bye. Bye. So that wow. was That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Let's that do this fun. again next week.
<laughs> every week but yeah damien's amazing wow. and I, i'm so thankful that he was able to join us because he's busy i mean he's editing this he's editing oh yeah right too, yeah so. right that's really yeah. cool but uh okay so if we can keep you guys for maybe a couple minutes longer we have our game of would you rather if that's okay let's do it let's do it Okay, Danica, do you want to read the first one? Let's jump right in. All right. Would you rather jam with Metallica or jam with Bruno Mars? Oh. <laughs> Maddie, I'm, uh, Maddie, you get to... so yeah. obvious. Like, for me, Bruno Mars, like, I'm a Bruno Mars fan, and I can't really say I'm a Metallica fan. I mean... Oh, my God, I love you. I know. I'm, oh, you love me. I thought you were going to say, I, oh, I hate no, you. No, no. I oh, have okay. never, ever been a Metallica fan. I can't, oh, okay. I can't get down with James's voice. I just can't do it. Like, yeah, like I respect them, and I, I think they're, like, legendary. But, yeah, I never really rocked out to them. But, like, Bruno Mars is, like, one of my favorites. I love Bruno Mars. Yeah, I do, too. Yeah. So, and the bass lines. Are you kidding me? If I jammed yeah. with Metallica, they would turn down the bass and you wouldn't even be able to, to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good so point. Play That's a good plugged point. over there, you know. Yeah. I, I was going to say, maybe something that a lot of people don't realize is like he's part of this massive group called the Smeezingtons, I believe it is, Bruno Mars. Mm -hmm. And like they're, you know, they've written so many hits that people don't even realize that they've written. Bruno Mars is a legend and he needs to put out music very soon because I, I feel like that that's what the world is missing right now is a little bit of Bruno Mars. So I, I agree. yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. Here's the next one. Would you rather, Oh, be in a rundown apartment with art, the clown or spend a night at camp crystal Lake. Uh, Oh, crystal Lake. Absolutely. I feel like there's like, Oh man, art, the clown is just terrifying. Like, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere. Yeah. Oh, hopefully, yeah. hopefully Damien's still watching because that was a nice pun. No, yeah. he is like, no, I. that's not even enjoyable. If I was in that universe, forget it. I don't even want to be a part of that. That's just way too crazy. Crystal Lake seems fun. It'd be cool oh, to see Jason, boy. you know? Yeah. 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 yeah oh, Jason's, absolutely. Jason's not all that scary. He was scary when I was what? a kid, but I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I watched Friday, the like the original. I think it actually may have been part two. Which I remember when I was a kid, it, it was it horrified me. But I watched it again not too long ago, and I was like, "Meh, meh, it's all right. It's okay, <laughs> it's not that scary." <laughs> true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's no I'm, wrong answers here. <laughs> I've been ruined by by art. I'm yeah. numb. I'm I mean, numb. Yeah. yeah. No way. I don't want to be in a terrifier movie. That's just <laughs> sure, that's that's a whole fair. other thing. <laughs> okay. There you go. All right. What's our next one? Would you rather have a writing session with Paul McCartney or with Bernie Taupin? Uh, Paul McCartney, 100%. Uh, yeah, I love the Beatles. And even now, like, I'll tell people my favorite bass player is Paul McCartney. Um, I grew up with, you know, listening to the Beatles and kind of, I've always been more of like a songwriter, singer, songwriter type vibe with uh, my musical abilities. So, um, yeah, I've always been more of like a a melodic bass player. I'm not like crazy virtuoso, but I, I kind of emulate a lot of what Paul was doing with like cool note choices and everything like that. Um, so not even a question, Paul McCartney, hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree with that. I, I was actually just doing, um, uh, I was doing a lesson yesterday and we were talking about how, you know, music is, or crafting a bass part, like writing a bass part, not just playing a part, but actually coming up with a part and, you know, being kind of the glue of the band as a bass player and like, you know, making the decisions that you make. And I feel like I kept referring to Paul McCartney. Like I just kept going back to Paul McCartney over and over and over again. But it's like when you're doing that and you're in that environment, you're like, wow, I keep coming back to this one guy for a reason, you know, because he's so legendary. But I don't know. I think his bass parts are so conversational. Like he's so good at knowing when to, to, to dynamically, when to bring it down and when to just stop altogether. And then like, I just, I don't know. I think, I think he's phenomenal. I love yeah. him. I know a lot of people get like weirded out by that answer too. I'm like, cause they say really? like, who's your favorite bass player? And when I say something like Paul McCartney, you know, yeah. They're like, cause they're, they expect you to say like the big crazy virtuosos who can tab and do all the crazy slaps and you yeah. know, play eight string basses. So for them, they're like, why? He's just the bass player for the Beatles. He can't be that good. And it's like, oh no, if you listen, it's yeah, it's phenomenal. The Beatles were so good because of that, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, here is our next one. Would you rather? Okay, listen to Muffin Man by Frank Zappa for 24 hours or listen to Albuquerque by Weird Al for 24 hours. Both the most insanosaurus songs yeah. on the planet. Frank Zappa, uh, I don't know. Uh, my brother was a big Frank Zappa fan. Um, 
I don't know. He always kind of scared me when I was a kid. <laughs> kind of freaked me out me. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it kind of yeah. kind of freaked me out. Um, but Weird Al, oof, I don't know. Like <laughs> Weird Al, Weird Al's hilarious. Weird, don't get me wrong, Weird Al's hilarious, and I love his songs. But after a while, his voice, like, I, it just starts to does something to me. I don't okay. know. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts a little bit. But here's okay. the question: Which one would you do? Yeah, I would. Get, yeah. I would have to go with Zappa. I'd go with Zappa. Really? I'd go yeah. with Weird Al. Actually, I, I would do Albuquerque. Yeah, I mean, Weird Al is obnoxiously strange with the way he presents music and sings and everything, but I don't know. I could do it. Yeah, yeah. It's only for 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> I could do it for a day. Yeah. Plus, that song is so long, right? Isn't that like a six-minute, eight-minute song it's or like something? It's like nine to ten. Nine. Like nine and a half is it really? Yeah. Yeah, that song is crazy long. So at least you don't have to go. listen to it as many times to yeah, fill in that go. 24 hours. So I yeah. could do Muffin, it. Muffin Man's a good solid seven minutes, though. So They're, they're both very, uh, yeah. Uh, I like Matt was saying, I, if I had the choice, I could do neither and kind of be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just go on with my life. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> All right. Next one is Would you rather go skydiving or deep sea diving? Oh, God. I know that one. <laughs> Which one? What would you do? I'm super afraid of heights. I'm not good with heights at all. Like at all, at all, at all. Like yeah. that freaks me out just looking at that picture. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's Deep not sea real. diving. Yeah. <laughs> Deep sea diving for sure. Yeah. It's same here. I don't want to jump out of a plane. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Would you, would you rather, Ooh, go to a hologram concert of Jimi Hendrix or a hologram concert of Wham? Wham. Oh. With an exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> You looked at my profile, I could tell. Yeah. <laughs> Wham, of course. Are you kidding me? I love Wham. George Michael, we got to see that yeah. going. Like, I love Jimi Hendrix, probably my favorite guitar player. Uh, but come on, I'd love to see Wham. That'd be great. Matt's probably like, what? why? Why would you want to uh, see Wham? No, I actually love Wham. I love George Wham Michael. Is, oh, yeah. Um, but I think everyone does. So, like, that's not even surprising. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I feel like it's, it depends on what day of the week it is for me. Like... I love Jimmy. <laughs> so wait, what's today? Monday. Today, today would be. I'd go with Wham. I think I'd go with Wham. Actually, mm, fun. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be great. Yeah. We need to bring back more of that fun '80s. Like you know, we need that oh, yeah. in this world. Are you kidding me? Just the carefree, yeah. and, like having fun. Absolutely. What the world needs now is more Wham. <laughs> That's what I've been saying, and uh, I hope the message is getting out there. <laughs> Loud and clear. All right. Finally. <laughs> All right. Let's see our next one. Would you rather be in the mosh pit of a show or in the nosebleed section of a show? Uh, oh. And let's say let, let's say the band is Corn. Yeah. Okay, so it's like a real mosh pit, where like... yeah, yeah, like a real yeah. like like a definitely okay. get injured mosh pit. Ah. <laughs> uh. I would say that's Metallica, so, but I know the answer for that. One. That's so crazy. Like I'm, I'm definitely an in between. I, I go to like a lot of, or I used to go to like a lot of punk shows and everything, where the moshing was just more like, oh, let's push each other and like jump around. But like, whenever I've gone to metal shows and they're like, all right, let's do the wall, let's split. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm going to the back of the room. Sorry. Yeah, that's so, next. That's next level. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. if we're talking about that, I'd rather be the. I've got a tour to worry about and like all this mm -hmm. stuff. I'll, I'll go to the nosebleed section and. Just kind of bring the binoculars. Yeah, bring the binoculars and and hide mm -hmm. out. <laughs> I would say it depends on. Um, I mean, like today, probably the nosebleed section because I'm too old for the mosh pit stuff. But back in the day, I I love being getting down in the thick of it, you know. But although I went to Lollapalooza '93, and um, I worked my way like kind of slowly throughout the day, I worked my my way all the way up to the very front, and then Primus went on because they headlined. Oh, no. And I've never been more terrified in my life. All of a sudden, I got wow. crushed up to, and I they had to. I was that guy. They had to pull me over the oh, over no. the barricade and you know wow. take me away. Yeah, because I. But I remember, like, for about thirty seconds, I was like, I'm not gonna make it out of this. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go down at a Primus show. It's over. You know, that's wow. the way to go. Yeah, yeah right? so, it was it was terrifying. Honestly, oh, wow, terrifying. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. I remember one time I was at a metal show and I was like there was like the circle pit going on and some yeah. dude got hit right in the mouth 
and like swung and his tooth went flying and like hit me <laughs> and it, it like landed at my feet and the guy had to like go pick up his tooth and he like put it in his pocket so like what is he gonna do with it i maybe he thought that he could put it back in i don't know yeah. <laughs> oh my god that's but i've been okay. to somewhere i'm like okay it's a little little rough I'm not gonna do that uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? i don't know if you were at that concert with me either but um the coheed and cambria show in like 2001 maybe but i not. i distinctly remember getting very squarely kicked right in the head. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, That's fun. Had, no, I have fragile bones. I, I, I'll be in the, the nose. I do too. And I didn't realize it really until that moment. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Even that person crowd surfing in that picture most likely is going to be kicking someone in the head in like five oh, yeah. seconds. Oh, I'll yeah. Go. Okay. It's a given. <laughs> All right. Here, here's the next one. Would you rather score a horror film or star in a horror film? Pretty sure that's, I can't tell if that's like a Photoshop picture of Nick Cage. As, I think it I is. Okay, sure. I just Googled it. <laughs> um, I would definitely rather score a horror film. Um, yeah. It, it's like my two loves of like horror and music. Um, I, I can't, I've never acted before. And I, I don't know for me, I'd rather be like, if I had something to show someone, I'd be like, wow, I, I wrote the film score to this horror movie as opposed to being like, Hey, I started in this and like I died. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I would definitely okay. score one. How about you, Matt? Uh, man, I'm on the same page. I think, man, I think we should, you got a studio. I got a studio. Let's do, let's get creative. Let's make some, let's make some horror music. Let's do it. Let's Down do it. it. Yeah. I, and if you need Danica I think and I that would be, be like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can do the, you Speaking can do the uh, special effects. <laughs> yeah. Although, do that. I do think it would be really cool to be an extra in The Walking Dead, though. Like, I would love to be a zombie in The Walking Dead. I think oh, that yeah. would be a lot of fun. Because that yeah. doesn't really take acting chops. You just have to. Yeah. Yeah, no, they, they make you go to they make you go to uh, zombie, school. zombie school. Never mind, I changed my mind. I'm not going to zombie school. I'm not <laughs> going to zombie school. That's, way, that's way too much of an investment of my time. I'm not doing that. I don't know. Zombie right. school sounds okay. If I get to go to zombie <laughs> school, this might change my whole answer. Actually, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to get Mom? Michael Cutlass back. <laughs> yeah. Right. So All right. Nice. Okay. Cool. How about our next one? All right. Would you rather get covered in blood at a Guar concert or covered in Fago at an ICP concert? <laughs> wow. I know that one. <laughs> you do know that one. What I, I don't. I'm I'm definitely Guar all the way. In oh, yeah. fact, I've seen Guar and it's a lot of fun. Um yeah. I, yeah. I, I love Guar. Uh Casey, actually the bass player, um is is a uh, is a buddy is an old buddy of mine back in the day. He's awesome, but uh, I I can't stand ICP, not my thing. <laughs> I'm, from, I'm, I mean, I'm from I'm from Michigan. I'm from I'm not from Detroit, but you know I kind of I claim Detroit when I want to sound like I'm tough. But um, <laughs> but I I can't I can't do the ICP thing. I used to I bartended at this this place in in the kitchen. The the chef or the cook or whatever at the kitchen every night would just blast ICP <laughs> so loud that my customers would leave, and I was like, "Dude, you got to turn that down, man! It's horrible! It's absolutely awful! Please stop playing it!" So, wow. yeah, yeah. I would can't do it. I'd go Guar as well. I, I would say that I, I'm actually not super huge on either, but I, I like what Guar is doing a little more than like the ICP. Um, never never been into them either, so. Yeah. Uh, but to get covered with blood and everything at a guar show while they've got all the prosthetics and all that stuff on, that'd be fun. So, yeah. yeah. I just wouldn't want it in my hair. No, like the blood uh, in the hair. Yeah. Stain I, our I, hair. I'd wear a shower cap. I, I, oh. I didn't say I wouldn't wear a shower cap there yeah. or a raincoat, okay. but like. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There are ways around it. But they're so sure, much sure. more theatrical. Like they're, I don't know, just, yeah, like all the prosthetics and, and their right. effects are just so much more theatrical. And I think that's why I enjoy them so much. <laughs> it, it reminds yeah. me of Empire Records. That's why I love Gore, because the Empire <laughs> Records scene. But Gore. Gore. the best. All right. I think that was our last one. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, we did it. <laughs> we did it. Uh, so, I, I know. know. Can we do another hour? Yeah. yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. okay. Uh, actually, <laughs> why, why don't we ask um, Danica, why don't you ask one more question and then we'll, then we'll wrap it up. Sure. Um, <laughs> so Maddie, uh, mm -hmm. previously, you know, we can see them right now. Your awesome yep. in-ear buds um, mm -hmm. are that beautiful hot pink that your hair used to be. That is correct. So now that you've got the Oh, blue, my computer froze. <laughs> um, oh, right, there we go. Hey, and now you're back. Um, a. Are you going to, too, like, have to get new <laughs> in-ear monitors that match the color of your hair or um, <laughs> like, <laughs> or 
or you know more more importantly what determines the color of your hair um okay so let's do the first question let's say that i wanted to go back to pink um that would require like six months of time because when i went from pink to blue i'd grow out all the pink till it faded then re-bleach it do the blue um i had the decision to go blue in like december and it took until march before i could do it and it took just until a few months ago before it was like really good uh, if I want to do new ear in ear monitors, then we're talking two thousand dollars for a custom mold. So uh, it'd probably be easier to get new monitors, but uh, I don't think I will. Um, I didn't have any plan to even change from the pink to the blue. I was kind of just doing a live stream, and one of the fans was like, "Oh, you should do a blue," and I'm like, "No, nah, I don't want to do that." But thanks. And then like, "Oh, you should do like, <laughs> you know? and like oh, but if you did like a baby blue or something, I'm like, "Oh, that would be cool." So I was gonna do like blue and silver and. That was literally it. I was going to get my hair done the next day. And I mentioned that in the live stream. So they're like, oh, go get blue. So I went to the salon the next day. I'm like, oh, yeah. Uh, so instead of doing pink, I want, I want to do blue. And my hairdresser was like, I can't just put blue in your hair. Are you kidding me? I didn't know the rules. I thought you put yeah. blue in and the next day it's blue. So, yeah, it took like a long time. So I got a haircut. I only played one show between then. We, we played that one show in San Francisco, like I was saying. We played with Kesha and everything. And uh, I had really short hair and it was blonde and it looked really weird. And I hate the pictures from that show. So um, now I've got the blue and it's, I mean, yeah, it's probably gonna be blue for a while. At least that's what I, I like, say. I like the blue. And and Matt, yeah. now now that you have like the good base, are you gonna try out any funky colors? Or are we still no, the blonde? No, man, no. I I this is this is my <laughs> this is COVID experimentation time right now. So <laughs> I'm just having fun. You know. So can I suggest something to you now that you're a blonde for, for temporary hair chalk? If you ever okay. just for a, for a day or like, you know, for a couple hours, want to try something different. If you put in hair chalk, it'll wash right out. So, okay. Yeah. Just, just, well, just I, a suggestion. You know, I did, I did my hair. Um, I, I actually wanted my hair that color blue a long time ago. I'm a big Jane's addiction fan. And I always loved Eric Avery. He's like one of my favorite bass players. And I remember in, in the, in the, um, been caught stealing video he had the blue hair and i was like oh i want that so bad <laughs> yours, yours is really good color by the way good job yeah. um heather my I'm, style. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm 44 <laughs> i can't pull it off no you're man. not though you you're not do like, it. we, yeah, we refuse to accept that yeah yeah me too no <laughs> i'm giving it never too old to rock awesome hair yeah no yeah. who knows yeah. You've got the justification. You're touring and come on, you're in a band. Successful band, yeah. too. You Not know what? Like a, all right. A bar band, yeah. you know? You for it, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're I would actually, <laughs> I think if I'm going to do, I think if I'm going to do um, a like a, a vibrant, if I'm going to, if I'm going to go there, I'm probably going to do pink. Nice. I think I would do pink. Yeah. That's right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pink for uh, that. Okay. So before we wrap this up, um, Matt, can you tell us about the next time that Blue October is going to do a full band live stream show? Do we have? Oh my God, is, is there a... that feels like it was Yeah. Like so that. it's um, <laughs> it's going to be I'm um, a calendar on my phone right now. By the way, okay. Um, I am. I'm lying. It's going to be September 26th. I just want to make sure I didn't give the wrong Ooh. date. Um, okay. Yeah, September uh, 26th, um, we're doing a full band live stream, and we're actually doing all of Foiled. Oh, album, wow. wow. Which okay. is a couple, there's a couple songs on there that we've never ever done live before. I'm like, oh, I probably should rehearse. I should probably go actually <laughs> practice. Um, and so that could be, um, that could be interesting for sure. But uh, I actually thought that, I thought the last live stream was, like, I, wa I watched it back and, and I got really good feedback on it. And everybody, um, you know, everybody told me that it looked great. It sounded great. And I went back and watched some of it. I, I thought it was awesome. I thought it, it turned out really amazing. good. Yeah. 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 I was yes. really happy with it. So I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to do it again. Honestly, I'm glad that we're mixing it up and we're doing a whole, you know, doing a whole album. Cause Justin, Justin has been doing a solo thing and he's been doing full album solo, you know, but we haven't been able to do that as a band yet. So I'm really pumped about it. Yeah, it, it really was fantastic from the location, like, and the lights and like, it really, yeah. it made you feel like you were there, right? Like, even though we're yeah. here, we felt mm -hmm. like we were there. So, you know, it really, it felt like a show, like it didn't, yeah. you know, it felt like, 
I've done other live stream stuff before and it's always a little awkward and weird, but there was just something about that setting and the mood and like the way that it was set up with the screens. Cause we could actually see people on screens and everything. And like, and it was really like, okay, wait, so it so was you just very watching. So, so part of it. Yeah. And I can't, yeah, it's, Were it's people like, wearing clothes. That's so, I didn't, didn't it was, that's that. why it was so good is cause everyone was naked. It was like, it was the main, no, there you go. um, <laughs> no, it was it was it it was awesome. It was super cool. It was really cool. So no, we had we had our some of our our crew and our people that were okay were Thank tuned God. in. That was like okay. we couldn't just spy on you out of the blue, you know. Okay. Um, Whenever I would live stream, I would always be scared of bringing people into my live streams because I'm like, I don't know who these people are, and they're probably gonna like troll me and be like naked on the screen. So like, <laughs> you know. So I just kind of stopped sure. like bringing people into live streams. I'm yeah. like, I don't want to be accountable for this, you know. They're gonna, <laughs> oh, yeah. they're gonna hack you. Yeah. Of course, right. we never know. Oh, yeah. Fun with that. Uh yeah. Matt, is there a song that you're most looking forward to playing from Foiled? Um You make me smile actually, just because we haven't done that in so long. Like we haven't played that in, in years now. And for a while it was uh it was one of those songs that we kind of have to get into a groove though, because we've like tried to bring it back a couple times and we're like, eh, that that yeah, I don't know, it wasn't so great. You know, because there's a lot of harmonies and there's a lot going on. So it's 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 um it's challenging. It's a challenging song, but it's really fun to play. It's a really fun bass line to play for sure. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So before we wrap this up, any final thoughts from either of y'all? Uh, final thoughts. Uh, I know. Well, I sound like Jerry Springer when I ask that. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> final <laughs> Take thoughts. Take care of yourself and each other. <laughs> <laughs> the surprise guest was phenomenal. I, I oh, good. Blew my mind. Exactly so what I was, was going to say. Super cool. I didn't expect oh, that. I thought I was just going to talk to Matt, and I'm like, ah. Uh, I can do yeah. that every time, you know? <laughs> Here we go. I've got, I got FaceTime. I've got a phone. Yeah, yeah except um, this time I have to talk to you for an hour straight because I have to, like, you know? So <laughs> no, at least there was a – <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, that was awesome. That was cool. I was I was actually thinking the exact same thing. Like, how cool is that? That's so thoughtful of you guys, too. Thank you so much. But that's really cool. No, thank you guys That's so pretty much. awesome. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. <sighs> We're connected. We're <laughs> I think that I think horror. I think being a horror fan, like being a horror fan, you're kind of a club, you know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, not everybody's into horror movies. Like people, like a yeah. lot of people, like are just like, I don't know. And those people are are just weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna say something ones. like I'm yeah. gonna say something super embarrassing, and Danica's is gonna not appreciate this. But when we were like, how old? Twelve. 13 maybe we mm -hmm. would redo horror films but i didn't know how to spell psycho so we did ficos which is <laughs> so beautiful and exists exists somewhere on my dad's yeah. old camcorder if i can get a hold of ficos i think yeah. we could make it danica like i think that that could be our claim we, we redid the exorcist we redid cujo um nice Ooh, good one <laughs> yeah i want to see these yeah. We'll have to find them. I'll have to ask my dad if he still has that camera. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> it's so embarrassing. <laughs> this sow is mine. Oh, so good. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, so Matt, we'll have to have you back for your sixth time. Maddie, we'll have to have you back for your second time. I'd love to. You guys are available, and uh, I guess I guess that's it, right? We did it. So we did uh, it. Woo! We did it. My camera so, only failed once. Woo! Oh, only once. <laughs> That was that's that awesome. Was Not bad for a first time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, next week, we want to mention that we have the current NWA World Heavyweight Champion Nick Aldis. He'll be joining us, so make sure to tune in for that. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful rest of your week. And we will see you guys real soon. Be safe, everybody. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.